am born in this wonderful city uh, of Soweto. So much so, I used to go around the world when I was being asked, where are you from? I wouldn't say South Africa, I'd say Soweto. I was very arrogant about it. And they say, where's that? I say, come on, you don't know Soweto. You know New York, you don't know Soweto. What kind, where, where are you from? You know? uh, I still feel very passionate about Soweto. I think it's, a, it's an amazing place. It has gifted our country and this world some amazing people and con continues to do so. And uh, there's a lot we can learn and, and watch and observe in Soweto. And it's one of these observations that I want to share with you this morning. Um, having come back from Cape Town five years ago, I restarted investing again in Soweto. And now I farm just outside of Soweto here in Ranfontein. So I spend a lot of time here in the township. Uh, my family and I go to church here in Soweto, have been coming to church in Soweto for a while now. So as often as I can, I'm back here at home and I reconnect with my birthplace. And over time, I've been seeing a transformation in Soweto, and I'm sure you have seen it with me. Uh, it's interesting that I've driven around this entire township and I struggle to find a road today that is not tarred, right? There was a time when the roads of Soweto were not tarred, but they're tarred today. What is this change that's happening in Soweto? <clears throat> Soweto is actually gentrifying. And what does gentrification mean? Gentrification is basically the simple process of one class of income group, typically a wealthy class, moving into an area that was predominantly inhabited by a lower income class. And we're starting to see that happen in Soweto. And that's the specific characteristics of the gentrification that we, we note that tell us that it's happening. First of all, there's a change in demographics. And by change in demographics, I just don't refer to the change in race, uh, in, the, in the race demographics of the area, even though that is happening. There is a change in the income classes that are inhabiting the area. There's a change in the real estate market. I will share some anecdotes that I received from a gentleman that runs a real estate business in Soweto. There's a change in how land is being used in Soweto. Uh, five years ago, this beautiful theater was not in Soweto. And those of us that grew up here knew that you only had AA2 in Mofolo to go to, where you could have this sort of seating. And the culture and the character of the environment changes. Uh, and I'll touch on that as well. So I just have this uh, example behind me of gentrification, and if it's hard to read, I'll take you through it. Just a very humorous depiction of what gentrification, of the gentrification cycle, and, and how it plays out. Uh, <clears throat> on the top right there, it begins with typically hipsters moving into an area and replacing <laughs> the working class minorities. And as you see, the bodegas, which, and this is a very US example, the bodegas, which is a, a bar in Spanish, and it's being replaced by an artisanal cupcake and hookah bar. And after the hipsters, the, tech, the techies come in with uh, their, uh, their coffee bars and their internet cafes, and they sit all day hacking and watching TEDx videos. And after, <laughs> after the techies, the bankers move in because the techies have got disposable income and the bankers are after that income. They set up their boutique uh, private equity shops, move into the environment, beautify it, and once that happens, big money, which is basically funding these bankers, moves in, and they just don't even bother to live there. They just move in, fix the place up, go for high rents, and as you can see, put a big dollar sign on that and, and, and take the profits. This is a very humorous <coughs> depiction of gentrification, but there's also a dark side to it. Uh, when we think about how gentrification happens, typically it, uh, there is displacement of the local community. The low-income community gets displaced, and where do they go? Because if, if one low-income area has had this influx of, of uh, the new wealthy middle class come in, where do the poor people go? Do they end up in, 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 in shacks and shanty towns? And th that is not a desirable outcome, because everybody deserves a place to live. And we have seen examples of this all over the world. I'm just, I call to mind, a recent example, Atzon, Maine, in downtown Johannesburg. I think most of us would know of Atzon, Maine. They run that fabulous weekend market on the Sunday. And it's a, it's a very hipster kind of place, right? There's, there's the hookah bars and there's a, a little 
creative arts theater. It's, it's very hipster. But arts on Main five years ago, most of those buildings were derelict buildings, condemned buildings uh, inhabited by illegal immigrants who would not necessarily have a roof over their shoulder, over their heads, I mean. So those people had to be moved. And there were whole families that were living there. That, so people who are on the margin, they don't, they don't qualify for RDP houses, cannot have enough money or a, an income that is consistent enough to pay for a room in, in Hillbrow, they would come and live in these derelict flats. And there'd be a whole community of people living in these derelict flats. Those people had to be forcibly moved out to make place for Mabona in Princeton, to make place for you and me to buy our little pad in the city, our weekend getaway from suburbia, right? And you, you, this is a place you visit, and this is somebody's home that they've lost. But this is what has happened. It's happened not just in Arts on Main, it happened in Woodstock in Cape Town, it's happened in Brooklyn in New York, it's happened in Oakland in, in the US, in, in, in California as well. It's, it's, a, it's a worldwide phenomenon. So it would, not be, it would not be unfitting for it to happen here in Soweto. But how is it happening in Soweto? Have we started to see some of these ill effects of it? I say not yet, because it's happening in, in various township nodes, right? We, we all know Villagazi. I think uh, a lot of us have had a many a drunken weekend at Villagazi. And when I say a lot of us, I don't mean just the Sowetans. Because on any day when you go to Villagazi Street, you will find any group of people from all walks of life. So it's not just, it's not just a place for Sowetan hipsters or for tourists or for Parkhurst hipsters who are tired of sitting at the foundry and want to try something else. <laughs> Everyone goes there. And it's changed so much. The picture behind me that I keep clicking on is a picture of a cafe that was opened up recently. I believe it was late 2012 of Thrive Cafe, opened up by a gentleman who runs a business in, um, in, in the suburbs and decided to invest in Soweto. And he didn't open up a, a typical shebeen with nice leather seats. He rebuilt completely a New York style bar with a full barista bar. And guess what? He also bakes croissants. And so these are things that you're able to start enjoying in Soweto. <laughs> right? So that's just Villa Gazi. But we also know that Protea Glen, which is just down the road this way, has had this huge mall being built there. Very, very decent uh, uh, mall. I use it often when I'm out on my farm. And the people around that mall are constantly demanding a better service. Last time I was there, I was speaking to some people who were at Woolworths and they were saying, we don't know why we don't have a Woolworths Foods. And there was a time I thought to myself, why would you have a Woolworths Foods in the township? But guess what? There's a food lover's market in Deep Kloof. So the demand is there, and if that demand is there, it will be supplied. But as I said, it's happening in nodes. Power Park in Klebsprate, around the Ekaya development, and the, 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 the big power station, there's developments there as well. And in, in, the, in the Pinville area around Maponya Mall. So it's happening nodally typically around well-established infrastructure. <coughs> but there's also a demographic change from a race point of view, but not the way you think. Behind me is a picture of Kevin Johnson Pietre and his son Ian Pietre, and this is a poor white family that is living in Soweto. They are one of 150 documented white families living in Soweto, side by side with their the, the neighbors. And there are people who have decided to make a life here because the rents are cheaper and there's still available amenities and facilities and transportation, as opposed to be staying in a, a, a rent shack tent somewhere under a bush in the felt. They're able to make a life for themselves in Soweto. So that's one group of people who are coming to Soweto. But we're also seeing on my right there, I'll read that for you. It says Thrive Cafe, our croissants are baked daily for that French flair. Right, so, so, and that's just down Villagazi Street. Across from that street, if you go this way, is Mrs. Tutu's house. And uh, the people, the reason Ross can put a sign like that is that the people who patronize his place, who want that, right? There's a lot of returning families who had upgraded to the suburbs in the southern suburbs of Johannesburg or the northern suburbs of Johannesburg, and I've decided to downsize. My mother recently downsized from her house in Morningside, and she was looking at a smaller place in Soweto. Couldn't find real estate because it goes so quickly and decided to buy a flat 
closer to Rheinberg. She could have gone to Soweto if you ask me. But anyway, uh, these people are coming back into the township. They're coming back with cash. They're buying their homes for cash. A lot of them are buying weekend homes. And a lot of them are coming in to invest. And I'll talk about that particular trend. That is taking, it's very much taking Soweto by storm. So we are seeing this change in demographics in Soweto. We are also seeing a change in real estate in Soweto. So in the past five years, past four years more or less, uh, IOL Property published that Soweto house prices grew 500%. Right? This at a time when, after the boom, we've been seeing 7 8% anemic growth in real estate prices, if that. 500% in Soweto. And when I speak to Sipo Blossa of Blossa Properties, he says he cannot feel the demand quick enough. If he puts a four-room house on the market today, tomorrow morning he's got four offers and 50% of them are cash. People ready to come and take over that four-room house. And I said, but what do those people do with those houses? He says a lot of these accommodation is being changed into single living rooms and flats, either for students or for a single person who wants just a roof over their head. And the rents they attract are astronomical. He said for student rooms, which a single room for a where two or three students could be living in there is renting for 3,000 rand a month. And your typical back room and garage setup that we have in so many Soweto houses, those rooms go for about 1,000 rand a month. At the low end, 800 rand. At the high end, 1,200 rand a month. So these guys buy these four-room houses, convert them, and put up eight rooms in their mini compound, and all of a sudden, he's got an undeclared tax income of eight, 10,000 rand in cash that he, he puts away. And guess what? It, the equity, in the, the, equity in, in, in the land and in the property keeps increasing. So it's a can't-win proposition if you are a business person. This development behind me here uh, that I'm showing is, this is the artist's depiction because... If you, when you come out and you go out of the theater and you go that way towards uh, Orlando, this development is supposed to be, supposed to be the high-rise flats that are on your, 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 your left. They do not look anything like that, by the way. So never buy on the brochure. But the idea is this is a large-scale, privately funded development that is being driven by a company that builds similar uh, uh, residential uh, facilities in places like Sunning Hill, in Randburg, and all over the northern suburbs, a company called Calgro M3. Now, once these companies are moving into the township, it changes the character of the place, right? Because all of a sudden, you've got a buoyant market of real estate. You can buy and trade. You can speculate because there is demand, and the banks move in, and they say, we'll give you money. This is all good because it creates equity for the homes that are around the area because they not, those people can now sell and get more money. But they take their equity and go where? Now, that's always the question. Take the equity and go where? Because you cannot take the equity and with the half a million rand you've made from selling your four-room house in Zola or in Middlelands or even here in Chablani, go and buy a place in Mondi or Mondo, any of the southern suburbs. And this is the challenge that Sowetans face right now. But we definitely see a change in the residential face of Soweto. But we also see a change in land use, right? Gone are the days when uh, you and a couple of mates would get together, like Pierre and his mate, and go paintballing it in Mulder's Drift or in Four Ways or anywhere like that. You can go and do it right here at Soweto Adventures at, at, um, at, the, at the Towers. I don't have the Towers up here. At Power Park in Orlando. There is a paintballing range there is a, a quad biking range, there is upsailing, and there is the bungee jumping. These are things that you can do right now in Soweto. And they're open not just on weekends. They're open every day of the week because there are people coming through every day of the week. There are patrons for these services. There are people who are willing to pay the 150 and be tethered to a string and jump off a ledge, <laughs> right? <coughs> but also... We, saw, we all saw the uproar or heard the uproar when Soweto Marathon was cancelled last year. And this year it was one of the biggest with Nike coming in as a sponsor. It's becoming a, a world-class event. It's got a high purse. I mean, the Kenyans don't run if there's no money. And <laughs> they were running this year, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, the last thing that I'm showing on this picture is this beautiful theater that we're in, the Soweto Theater. It's a fantastic facility. 
But guess what? It's one of many now. Now, the days where there's one mall in Soweto, one decent nightclub, one decent restaurant, one decent theater, it's gone. Because there is enough of a demand for Soweto Theatre to be patronized tonight and Walter Sisulu to be patronized and any other facility that's available to be patronized. And all these places will be full on any given night because the, we, have, we have broadened the income base and the people with disposable income are here in Soweto, spending in Soweto. So definitely a shift in leisure options as well. And with that, it brings a change in culture, right? There's a whole skateboarding crew. There is a biking crew. There is a, uh, uh, what do they call this thing? Where the drag racing crew. These are all things that are happening in Soweto right now. And you don't have to join them in the suburbs and live in, no, they're here. I'd have to leave the suburbs and come join them here. So I'm with my 12-year-old son. When we move back, you can have new skating buddies, right? You don't have to worry about the ones that you're leaving behind. So it's all happening here in Soweto. People have to deal with different things now. It, it, I mean, it, it all sounds good and exciting, but it, there is, as I said, there is a, a dark side to all of this, right? Vilagazi Street, very popular, and I spoke to Ross about, about it, the owner of Thrive Cafe. He said, in our community meetings, when we get together here, because we meet quite regularly with the commun community, the biggest issue is the nuisance factor that our various establishments bring, right? If you've been to Sakumzi's place, at 10 p.m. on a Friday night, you know the mess that it is, is happening there, right? It's, it's raucous, it's a, it's a shibi, so it's crazy. Now those people will go and they're drunk on their way to their cars, they'll be puking all over people's grasses and all sorts of things, right? And that noise factor, you've got an elderly lady staying in a four-room house not too far from that place, she has to deal with that nuisance factor. She has to deal with people parking on her grass and now and then knocking over her fence, right? But all of these other nuisance factors pale in comparison to, right now, the positivity that we see from this gentrification, the availability of amenities, the availability of service, uh, the low levels of crime around these development nodes, right? I was looking at purchasing a place here back home a while back when we moved back from Cape Town, my wife and I, and she said, if you want to buy a place here, I'm, I'm all for it, but you need to get us ADT. So I went to go and find ADT. I couldn't find ADT. This was around four years ago. Now there are over 50 licensed security companies that will service your home in Soweto. Over 50 in four years. Point is, it has become very, very viable to live here. And people are catching on. The rates are not so high. And if you don't feel like paying your electricity, you don't have to. <laughs> As you can hear one so to residents saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so these are all considerations as we all get squeezed and find it very difficult to live these suburban lives that are somewhat impersonal also. So what does this all mean? As I said, the rents and house prices are going through the roof. As a, as, a, as a business person, a private investor, would I put my money in Soweto? I have put my money in Soweto. I've rent businesses here, and I'm still looking for other business opportunities. And we'll take them when they come. Because why? There is an upwardly mobile community living in this particular part of the, of the country, part, particular part of the city. There are services here. There are amenities. There are facilities. There's transportation. Rea Via has really changed the accessibility of Soweto. Places as far flung as Protea have got a rare via service. You can now live there and still be able to get to work within an hour. There is some social upheaval, as I said, with some of the nuisance factor, but it pales in comparison, and there's definitely a transformation of the character of Soweto. Uh, this is the fifth TED Talk. I am sure that by the sixth or seventh TED Talk, this hall would be standing room only. It's just a matter of time. It's how it goes. It's, this is the, the economic pattern that the rest of the world has followed, and I don't see how it will be any different in Soweto. Will it have a silver lining for us? I think only time will tell. Thank you. Thank you.